I got I got a silly poem that's a reimagining of a of a Shel Silverstein poem called The Perfect High. It's about drugs. <laughs> there once was this kid named Take Some More Sid, and he tried every drug in the book. He smoked weed, swallowed pills, he chased all the cheap thrills, and he liked his heroin to be thoroughly cooked. <laughs> he sniffed dust and drank booze to get him more loose, and he tried acid and shrooms for the brain. He ate THC, he smoked PCP, salvia, peyote, cocaine. But no matter the substance, no matter the dealer, no matter the method of use, he hadn't achieved the feeling he believed would lead him to the ultimate truth. So he kept on using anything that he could ingest. He tried, and he tried, and he tried. He was on a journey, call it a foolish man's quest, to achieve the perfect high. He sniffed lines of raw sugar. He smoked crushed coffee beans. He injected rainwater right into his veins. He smoked nightmares in peace pipes and drank fermented cat's piss. He injected menstrual blood right into his wrists. He smoked kryptonite that he cooked in a spoon with the heat from the sun. And he snorted the leftover sulfur from the barrels of guns. And he injected ink in his veins in hopes that it would help show... No. He, he injected ink in his veins. He thought it might help what he'd write. He rolled his joint view the perfect high. So take some more Sid, he did what he did, and he didn't mull it over too long. He packed up some water and some rations of food and a couple of loose quarters, a traveler's canteen of booze, and he had a special long bag for his bomb. And with his possessions in tow, he knew where to go, and in the snort of some coke, he was gone. And he walked along roads with his thumb out exposed, but nobody even slowed down. So he walked on for miles with his focus beguiled until he came to this beaten downtown. And he walked through that town asking around, does anyone know Cronus Silvi? And the old village drunkard, his raspy voice thundered. He said, yeah, I know that guy. He's old and he's gray and he'll show you the way. And some say he's crazy, but that's not what I say. I say that he's really quite wise, that his beard is as long as the mountain he's on and he speaks of the perfect high. And Sid, he was off with a bong hit and cough and barely a thank you to speak as he walked in the forest through a chirping bird chorus until he came to the foot of that peak. And just like the drunkard had told, Sid saw a gray tuft that traveled all the way up, and he grabbed himself a strong-handed hold. And he climbed up the beard despite his own fears and fought against the urge to give up. And when he reached the top, his jaw fully dropped as there sat Cronus in a tiny straw hut. And Cronus Silvi was a strange-looking guy with his eyes to the side and his hemp-sewn disguise and his beard like a waterfall frozen in time. And he opened his left eye really wide and said, What the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> and Sid, with the smile of a giddy young child, said, Someone told me you're the man I should see. See, I heard that you hold a secret like gold and you can show me the light of this life. That if I could find you, then my troubles are through because you'll lead me to the perfect high. <laughs> oh my, oh my, chuckled Cronus Silvi, another wayward young man who thinks what he drinks and he smokes and he swallows is going to help him to understand. Well, I'm sorry, young fella. I ain't no storyteller. I'm gonna just tell you what's true. The high that you seek is well in your reach, but it depends on that which you do. And it will not be found growing in ground. The dealer won't sell it by ounces or pounds. It has no effects on your health because the high that you seek isn't found on the street. You will find it inside of yourself. And Sid turned so red that steam rose from his head. And he said, what the fuck did you say? Do you think that I walked and I crawled and I climbed and I journeyed all of this way to hear your recital of an after-school special? I've got money, man, I'm willing to pay. Don't give me that rhetoric high on life and etc. I need something I can take to sustain, something that's real, that I can look at and feel, and that affects neurochemicals inside of my brain. Okay then, said Cronus. 
I'll give you a bonus, but you can't tell no one this fact. See, there's an archipelago right under Australia, too small to be seen on the map. And if you get on a boat and you sail with hope and you dock on the shore of the island before the one that's both southernly south, you're, you'll stare faces to face with a beastly disgrace with two heads and 22 mouths. And if you answer his riddle and outplay him at fiddle and beat him in chess on the sand, he'll give you the key to the garden of ye and a lulu seed for you to plant. <laughs> and once it's been buried, don't be in no hurry. You'll have to just sit down and wait. Because it takes concentration and ridiculous patience. Fifty years is the least it'll take. But once it's grown into a tree that's too tall to see, where the fuck is the rest of this poem? <laughs> Wind it up. Then you must, yeah, it's very good. Then you must climb to the very tip top and pluck just one petal from its blossoming flowers and boil it with water inside of a pot. And then drink it up quickly. It might, might, it might make you feel sickly, but the high begins right on the spot. And the high keeps on coming and it never subsides and your body will feel it in waves from your toes to your eyes, but your thoughts will be clear as can be. And Sid cut him off with a well-timed out cough and said, this drink sounds like it's perfect for me. I didn't travel this far to this place where we are to go home with nothing to show. So he tossed Cronus a 10 and he packed up his things and he told him that he had to go. And Cronus sat put alone in his hut and spoke softly out over his peak. And he said, I gave him a chance, but he's too caught in romance. And so now it'll be what it be. See, whether they're withered old souls that are in search of some gold or they're the eagerest of wide-eyed youths, it's always easier to sell them some shit than it is to tell them the truth. Yeah. <laughs>